Jesus is coming back again. And if you say no, I don't think these stories are true. This is just the story of Kok and Bull, Allah, Allah, Yoruba. Story, story, story. It will shock you on that day because the cloud will change and the Messiah himself will appear in the sky. That will be his second coming because he told us in the tomb that he's definitely coming back again. You see, there are people who don't believe in Jesus. They believe this story of Jesus is just something cooked up by some few people. And they just say, let's just write some books and put them together. If you do your research well, 700 years before he was born, Isaiah prophesied. Talked about his birth. Talked about details. You see, when people give prophecy and they give you details, they are sure what they are talking about. He will be giving vinegar to drink. They will cast lot on his clothes. All these details were given. A crown of thorns were put on him. Jesus is coming back again. If there's nothing to take home today, please take this home. I know we don't hear this often in church again. He's coming back again. And when he comes back again, he's coming for his own. The head of Abalist in Lagos State is number 17 child, the last born. Walked into this church 20 years ago. He didn't think he was coming into a church. He thought he was coming to watch drama. What Yoruba people call Eriyoritage, stage drama. He saw the advert, he came. He said nobody in his house ever attended church or mosque. They are not Christians, they are not Muslim, they are Ifa people. As a matter of fact, he was a teenager and he already has his own shrine. And this young man just sat in our midst. Maybe you are that kind of person this morning. And the war and the drama continued. To the middle of the drama, we stopped the drama. I came up and I preached. And I gave an altar call. He said he had somebody told him, come out. Who is that person? Jesus. Why many people believe Jesus is not real? Because they don't, they don't have a one-on-one -on -one encounter with him. When John had an encounter, he said we had him, we saw him, we touched him. You can't, you can't confuse someone who has seen, had, and touched these are three powerful evidences. If you say I heard, that is just one thought. If you say I saw, that's just one. But this is a complete message. I heard, I saw, and I touched. So this young man said he came out of the congregation with annoyance because in their house, up till today, in Papa there, they don't close their door. And no thief dare come into that house. Those who are doing evangelism, you know those who are a crowd. When they cry, when they get to that point of entering um, in the front of their house, they will keep quiet. It's when they have passed the front of their house, they will start again. Because if you dare make noise, he said they have a uh, pankere, I don't know if you he said they have the ones they have put in charm, they will bring it out and beat them away. But that day, Jesus arrested him. And Jesus told him, come out. He said when he got outside, he was trying to go away. That No, I won't respond. He had that voice again. If you move, I will kill you. You know, some people can't just get... Some people are like Saul, Apostle Paul. The way they will get born again is not easy. It's not this one. They just make a call. You're already, you're already crying. Some people are not like that. Not all of us are not like that. Some people are going to see fire, see water, see everything. He had that voice clearly. If you move, I will kill you. He said with the fear. He ran back. He came out and gave his life to Christ. The 17th child, the last born. This boy said before he gave his life to Christ, when he's going for exam, he will write his full name on his palm because he can't spell his name correctly. That's how dull he was. He cannot even spell his name. So he will write his name so that when he's, they give him paper, he will now copy it from his palm. There is what you probably call Ogunsoye. Some of you, Ogunsoye is charm for brilliancy, to be brilliant. He has swallowed many, he has drank, he has carried many. The, the, this thing refused to, sorry, to refuse to wake up. But this guy gave his life to Christ in that service and began to come one by one. I remember then when he started coming, almost every Sunday, we make altar call, he'll still come out. Until he, he had that foundation. 
and began to work with God. And one thing I learned from, I saw in his life is that he was very hardened. He was sure of what he was doing and he began to come to church. The first miracle was that it was time to do GCE. He cleared his GCE. One, one attempt. He was the first person in his house to pass GCE. The 16 people in front of him that drank all the Ogun he did not pass. He got admission to the University of Lagos. He came out with 2-1. Just watch what Jesus, and they said Jesus is not real. He came out with 2-1. With few points to be first class. Very few points to be first class. His father invited one of our ministers to church and said, I don't know what you are giving this guy. But whatever you are giving him, please keep giving him. The herbalist, the head of herbalist in Lagos. Acknowledge something greater. And recommended that, I don't know what you've been giving. My, you invited one of our ministers. Whatever you are giving him, please continue to give him. He said, because with all the Ogunso, you nobody ever passed GC. This is the same people in front of him before they finish secondary school. If you're a woman, you have, got, you have been pregnant out of wedlock. If you're not a woman, you have impregnated somebody. He got married as a virgin. He's a pastor today in this church. Now, now I'm trying to prove something quickly. If Baba now fell sick. The head of Habalis fell sick. They tried everything. They, tried, they were killing things. They were doing all kinds of sacrifices. The sickness refused to go. So he told his other big children, he said, call that my number 17 child. They call him pastor then. If I call him pastor in the house, tell him to bring his, that oil. They say, oil I see him with all the time. Tell him to bring the oil when he's coming. The head of, this is not just an abalist, the head, the one that went over, who wants to know what if I say, is the one they will call. So in case you are doubting this one, there are many Jesuses, if there is any English like that. Because what God did as a result of his death and resurrection was that he sowed Jesus as a seed. Sorry that some people will say, if it's, I'm sorry for, if you don't like what I just, I'm describing some, some people say, how did you buy Bible? Wow. You know some people can, some small thing can offend some people. But he took Jesus and sowed him as a seed. Jesus himself said concerning his death, he said, except a corn of wheat fall to the ground and die. If not, it will abide alone. He said, but when it dies, it will come back alive and bring forth much fruits. We are the much fruits. 2.3 billion Christians on planet Earth. 34.1% of the world population. Islam, 24%. Hinduism, 15.1 percent. Atheist, 15 point something percent. They killed him because he was popular. He died and rose again and became more popular. So finally, this young man carried anointing oil to visit Baba in the hospital and got to the hospital and said, Daddy, I'm here. What do you want us to do? He said, I've seen you use this oil to pray for yourself. Can you anoint me? Head of Habalist got to the a, to a dead end he sought for Jesus and the young man says daddy if I anoint you it will not work until you give your life to Christ he said how can I how can I do it he led him to Christ and Baba died the second day the next day he died so if you're thinking will he be in heaven he's in heaven when you buy your ticket, it doesn't matter. Just buy the ticket. Have you ever got into a show? They say, no, you bought your ticket three hours ago, you can't enter. No, once you have the ticket, when you buy it, it doesn't matter. Maybe today is the day you should get your own ticket. If there is nothing to go home with, I like to go home with the fact that Jesus is coming back. If you think he's not real, maybe you want to wake up at eternity to discover he's real. But it will be too late. 18th of August, 1987. 
I had this kind of message. I was about 17 years old. I'll be 53 in October. I had this message, and, I, and when I had this message, I was looking for how to get born again. But they didn't make altar call on that, in that. But they gave me a book of Kenneth Hagin in him. Very small book. I got home. My mother noticed that this boy, ah, this boy, is, he didn't get home like I got home. I looked so different. I, I locked my room. I read in him from the page one to the hand. And I saw at the back, sinner's prayer. And I knelt down in my room as a little boy, 17 years old. And I read, because I felt I was a sinner. And I read that prayer to myself. Before that day, I was smoking, I was drinking, I was doing all kinds of things. I told you a story that I almost fell inside Kana one day. Because they took me to drink palm wine somewhere. I didn't know that the palm wine, they have added some other things. This palm wine in Lagos, I drank it, the ground just came like this. My cousin that I thought he is older, he should be able to, I don't think that the same thing that happened to me has happened to him. He wasn't going to my direction, I was not going to his direction. His own house was closer, my house was farther. I knew that day if I get home, it's a miracle. I don't know if, well, if you have, I don't know what I'm, I know if I can make it home, then it's God that took me home. And I got home. But that day, I made a decision. 18th of August, 1987. Nobody led me to God. I just read the book and I read the back of the book and I just prayed. And that's how the miracle started. You know why you have not experienced the fullness of his power? Because you've not given him the fullness of yourself. He needs the fullness of you. One of the things I've noticed about God is that God loves everything. He's so jealous. God is like some of us. Once you marry someone, you want all the attention on you. That's exactly how God too is. It's not people that say God is jealous. God was the one that declared that I'm a jealous God. So in case it's God who came out and said, I am a jealous God. God wants the totality of you. If after singing all the songs and enjoying all this, the best thing you can do this morning is to surrender your life to him. And if you have done that, you've surrendered your life to him, you're born again, you're a child of God, your name is written in the book of life, then get ready because Jesus is coming back. He said it all by folding the handkerchief and said, anybody who comes in first should tell every other person, I'm coming back. Let's stand up on our feet. Lift up your two hands wherever you are. That same Jesus is here. That is here this morning. He's here this morning. The song, all the song we've been singing is about him. You know that song? Miracle, no, the tired Jesus. It's about him. Everything we've been doing is about him. The hymn song is about him. I'd like you to speak to him and say, Father, help me to be ready for, the sec for your second coming. I want to be ready for your second coming. I want to be fit for your second coming. I want your second coming to make sense to me. Because your death and resurrection makes a lot of sense to me. And if you're here, you're not born again. Just place your right hand on your chest and say, Lord, forgive me all my sins. Don't let anybody fool you. It's not as difficult as they paint it. All it requires is belief. And you'll be saved. But the belief comes with some action because faith without action is dead. I'd like you to speak to God and say, Jesus, have mercy on me. Forgive me of my sins. If you're praying that prayer of forgiveness, place your right hand on your chest and begin to say, Lord Jesus, I'm ready for you. I love you with all my heart. You love me so much. You love me first and I love you back. Help me. Forgive me. In Jesus' precious name we pray. If you've said that prayer, all eyes closed, all heads bow. I want you to say this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for forgiving me. I had your knock in my heart this morning and I opened the door of my heart. Come into my heart. I believe you died for my sake. You rose up the third day for my justification. From today, Lord, I'm born again. I'm a child of God. All things are passed away. All things have become, have become new. I believe in your lordship. I believe you are the savior of the world. Thank you for accepting me. From today I declare, all things are passed away. All things have become new. 
In Jesus' precious name, we pray. I pray for everyone who has made this decision this morning. May the power of the Holy Spirit come upon you. Afresh, may you begin to have personal encounter with Jesus. You see, Moses, please, will not be singing or be doing this if he has not had an encounter with him. The choir, they won't sing with that kind of energy if they've not had an encounter with him. Bukolati, me talk where? Yesterday, will not sing with that kind of passion if she has not had an encounter with him. Most of us here, we had a one-on-one -on -one encounter with him. I pray for you. You too will have an encounter with him. Jesus will reveal himself to you. He will walk into your room. You, you are not saying amen. amen. You will say like John said, I heard him, I saw him, I touched him. And you, it will change your life. He will take care of you. He will take care of you. He took care of the 17th child, the last born of an Ifa priest. Until all the children started accepting Jesus. Some of them started accepting Jesus through him. Even though he was the last born. He became a voice. Because God, they saw God do things they've tried to do. God just did it by grace and mercy. I pray that your life too will become an example. God will so take care of you. Your testimony will draw many to Christ. God will so take care of you. Those who don't believe your Christ, they will begin to follow your Christ. Many years ago, I was preaching to somebody's children. One of my, and he said, don't preach to my children. I don't want them to be born again. A relation. I said, why? He said, I don't want them to become swebe. He said, those who are born again are too slow. I said, but. So I kept quiet. Today, that person is a member of this church. He moved to Ikoi recently. I said, will you still be making it to church? He said, why not? He, comes, he was in first service today. He comes all the way from Ikoi every Sunday. When you have a one-on-one -on -one encounter with him, you don't need any encouragement again. You know it like you know your name. I pray for you that Jesus that we celebrate today will appear to you. Amen. His appearance in your life will change everything. Amen. His manifestation in your life will change everything. Amen. His appearance in your life will break the neck of every dragon in your life. When they placed the Ark of Covenant beside the, 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 the dragon, it fell down. They took it back. It fell down again until it broke to see. It, 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 look, whatever represents dragon in your family will break into pieces. Amen. Whatever represents shame, reproach in your life will break into pieces. Amen. Jesus will appear to you. It will change your life. It will make beauty out to come out of your ashes. It will make breakthrough to come out of your breakdowns. It will turn your life around. It will make your life a miracle. Your family and friends will know you are a miracle. You won't need to open your mouth. Your life will preach the message of Jesus. You won't need to open your mouth. Your life will preach the message of Jesus. You may not need to open your mouth. Your life will preach the message of the gospel. Those who used to know you will say, that your life has changed. This can't be man. This can only be God. Wave your hands and give him praise.